In today's video, we are going to be talking about curl. I think it's a pretty cool concept and it's really important in the field of electromagnetics. So in the previous video, we talked about divergence and how the divergence tells you how much flux is going out or into a point in space. Curl is kind of similar, although instead of talking about how much is going in or out of a point, the curl basically tells you how much a vector field is swirling about a particular point in space. We can define swirl or circulation, as it's more formally known, as a measure of how much a field circulates around a closed path. Mathematically, what we would do is we would take any arbitrary closed path and if we wanted to know how much it was circulating around in a given direction, we define what is called a DL vector or a differential length vector. Basically a small little differential length that is in line with the path and has a certain direction that's, or, or a certain circulation around the path. So you basically break up this, uh, this, this closed path into a bunch of little infinitesimal vectors, and each vector, just being your DL vector, it's in line with this closed path here. So once you define that, to find the overall net circulation around that loop, is what you do is you look at the electric field at each point on the loop and find out how much of that field is parallel or the parallel component to the, the line there. And then what you do is you multiply them. So you do basically E parallel times this little tiny segment here, uh, this little DL segment there. And that's like a little tiny you know, piece of the, of the loop there. And then you, you would do that for the next segment, and the next segment, and the next segment, taking the, that parallel component, component that's aligned, and then you would add them all together. Now notice that if the electric field, let's say was oriented this way, like this, at this spot, then it would have a parallel component, a parallel here, that is going opposite of DL. So it would count as a, a negative sort of uh, circulation or a circulation that's going in the opposite way that you defined it with DL. But the idea is that if you do an integration around the whole loop, then you, you can, with, with DL oriented in count, the counterclockwise direction, you can figure out like what is the net circulation in the counterclockwise direction. The, 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 the orientation of your DL vector tells you what direction you're, you're looking for in the circulation. So mathematically what this is essentially is it's the integral over this closed loop of E dotted with DL. You use the dot product to find that, that parallel component. How, how much of the vectors aligned and you so you add all these things up together and that gives you an overall circulation through that loop in the in the DL direction. All right so curl is basically circulation at a point. So if you remember when we when we talked about divergence we were talking about you know flux going out of a small volume well, we're going to do something very similar with curl. Let's say you have this XYZ coordinate system and you pick a point P here. 
a random point. And we want to know what is the curl at that point. But what you do is you would basically zoom in on here and basically form, instead of a small differential uh, or a tiny little cube, instead you make small loops. And we want to form three small loops. Three small loops. And the reason is because we don't really know what the circulation, what the orientation of the circulation is. So we need to be, look, be looking at for the circulation in the in every single plane. Um, in the we need to be looking in the uh, the x y plane, the the x z plane, and the z y plane. So you form these three loops here, um, and basically try to find out what is the circulation going through each tiny loop. Once you do that, you can find the total circulation just by taking the square root of the sum of the squares. The circulation then at that particular point P can be found, if you work this out mathematically, by taking the limit as delta x, delta y, and delta z go to zero, with delta, delta x, delta y, and delta z are basically the dimensions of your little square loops that you've formed. And so basically, you, if you, you take that limit, what the curl of E essentially is, the curl of a vector field at a particular point, is it's basically the maximum circulation or maximum swirliness, if you like that terminology, per really small loop or infinitesimally small loop. One thing I want to mention is another way you could talk about the maximum circulation is rather than having three different loops that you're calculating the circulation through, what you could do is you could take one small loop and then you could orient and play around with the orientation of that small loop until its circulation was a maximum. But the way you actually do that is by just breaking it up into to the different uh, planes by having those three different loops and then you can you know, just calculate that. But, but essentially what you're doing here is you are um, finding the orientation of that little loop that gives you the maximum circulation at that particular point. Unlike the divergence, the curl of a vector is a vector, and you can compute it by just taking the del operator and crossing it with the electric field. The way that you determine the direction of the curl is by going back to what I was talking about, how curl has to do with like this circulation, maximum circulation per tiny loop. And so imagine this is a tiny loop there. And you've oriented this tiny loop such that there is maximum circulation. Then what you do is you use the right hand rule to determine the direction of the curl. You'd curl your, your, fing your fingers of your right hand here. Oh, this is a terrible drawing, but I'm not using my actual hand because it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't look quite right in the camera. Um, and, uh, and then you point your, your thumb essentially then, so your fingers here point in the direction of the circulation. And your thumb then points in the direction of, of, oops, uh, of the curl of E. So that's how you determine the, the direction of the curl. So there's a theorem associated with the curl of a vector field called Stokes theorem. And it's kind of similar to the divergence theorem, except for curl. So this is what Stokes' theorem says in more informal language to kind of help you remember it, actually. Um, so basically, the, it states that the circulation around the border of any blanket, and what I mean by blanket, I just mean like an arbitrary surface, but blanket is something you're more familiar with. So you, if you want to wanna find the circulation, you have a vector field, and you define like an arbitrary blanket surface 
in the coordinate system, and you want to calculate the circulation around it, you can compute that by breaking the blanket into really little blankets, computing the circulation around each little blanket, and adding them together. So the little blankets you could think of as basically like little, little loops um, or little infinitesimal loops. So that's the kind of informal definition. Let's think about this more mathematically. Okay, so here's your, your blanket here, um, kind of a weird, weirdly shaped blanket, and it doesn't have to be flat. It can be wavy, whatever, it doesn't matter. Basically what you do then is you chop it up into a bunch of little pieces and you know you keep each little square in the exact same orientation. So if it's a wavy, wrinkly blanket, you keep it all in the same, same orientation, but chop it up. And then you just go to each little blanket and calculate uh, with a given you know, field around it, calculate what the circulation is around that one. And then what's the circulation around you know, this one? and this one, and this one. And then you add all those up together and it actually gives you the total circulation around this border here of the blanket or the contour and, and the surface here, S. So mathematically, what that, this says is that here the integral of E dot DL, which is essentially this total circulation around this closed surface here, is equal to the curl of E dotted with dS. So remember here that the curl of E, that's the maximum swirl per little loop. Maximum swirl per little loop. But then you've got to, you've got to dot it with the ds vector and the ds vector is basically it's a a little differential surface area that you define that is normal to every little square patch or little um differential surface area there so this is your 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 ds vector there and i just drew that little square to show that it's normal to the to the uh surface so um whatever Whatever orientation the little square is at, you know, it might be a wavy blanket, that little ds vector will always be normal, normal to the little patch that it sits on. And the reason you have to dot ds with this is because the curl v gives you the maximum swirl or <laughs> circulation per little loop. It's the maximum though. You want to know how much circulation is going about the little patch on the blanket. So that's why you have to do this dot product to find out how much is that maximum circulation loop aligned with the little loop on the blanket. Hopefully that, that made, some, <laughs> made some sense there. But, but basically you, you, uh, you do this dot product. And so that gives you, so here you've got, you know, the swirl per loop and then you have a little loop here and then doing this integral adds them all together to give you that that total value there all right so a few concluding thoughts before you go one is that if you are wanting to look into some more details mathematical details of the derivation of all of this i would highly recommend Feynman's lectures on physics so I'm going to put a link in the description below. And secondly, I will be doing some more concrete like examples. I know this has been like really conceptual, but I just think it's really important to like really understand like intuitively what these quantities represent. And when you understand that, it just makes things so much easier. So in some future videos, I will be doing some some concrete examples, but I hope that at least this gives you a, a more intuitive understanding of what these sorts of vector operations mean so that we can start to understand Maxwell's equations.